Hey Simonics, what's up? Welcome to a new Ionic tutorial. Today we're talking about a topic that usually brings a lot of issues and that is cores. So usually if you make an API uh, call to your API, to your backend, um, the backend has to enable some functionalities for your Ionic application or web application to allow that request. Because usually, for example, you're testing out your application runs on uh, HTTP localhost, uh, whatever port, and your backend runs on uh, mybackend.com. In that case, the domains are different. Um, if you have an enabled course, this will result in an error. And today we're gonna take a look at two different examples of how to fix this. First one, interesting one, using a proxy. It sounds actually more tricky than it is, but we will check out a Git repository, make some changes and deploy to Heroku in no time. And the second option involves using the Capacitor native HTTP plugin, which allows us to, at least on a device, perform these requests without any course issues, as not the JavaScript implementation for an HTTP call will be used, but the native version instead. Let's take a look at the problem first, and then go through both implementations to finally solve any course issue that you might encounter. I assume that you already encountered the course issue, so otherwise you wouldn't check out this video. Um, therefore, I created a little application up front. I injected the uh, HTTP client module or imported it, and then created a basic uh, class to make a GET request to the Age of Empires API. It was actually hard to find an API that doesn't come with course support these days, but this is one of them. So if I now check out the application, I click load data, and I get an error, you know, access uh, blah, 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 has been blocked by course policy. No access control or origin header is presented on the requested resource. Now, how can we fix this? Um, first of all, once again, recommendation is definitely to talk uh, to your backend team or work on the backend if you control it and just enable course. That would be uh, really the easiest solution. It's not a big deal. Uh, you can easily add this to your application, but if this is not in your power, you can't talk to them, they don't want to implement it. In that case, uh, you can still take steps to fix this problem yourself. And there is a cool package called Course Anywhere. Um, this is actually hosted and you can directly use it. So you can simply use um, this URL and put it right here in front of your other URL. And then let's check out our application again and call load data once again. And there we see we get data from the Age of Empires API. But of course, this is a hosted uh, course uh, server. You don't really want to rely on it. So uh, let's quickly um, uh, clone this and host our own course server because it's really, it just takes a few minutes. So what we can do is we can first of all clone the git repository, git clone, uh, the URL of the git repository. Then we dive into the course anywhere and we're gonna open it. Uh, what we wanna do in here is actually quite easy, but before we get into the code, I also um, recommend that you remove the origin because, um, so if you show the remote, if you clone the repository from GitHub, you will have the still the repository as origin. So in that case, um, just call git remote rm origin, which will remove the origin so you don't push or commit anything to the repository just in case. I think you can't do it anyway, but that's just a little um, additional security step. Now the question is, what do we wanna change in here? Uh, if we check out the course server, um, we don't really need to understand what's going on. The only interesting part is here, the origin whitelist and blacklist. Although I don't like the, uh, the term anymore, um, that's just what's implemented in the repository. We wanna allow access to the API from localhost, whatever. But if you also wanna test it on a device, um, I got you covered. 
I already prepared something up front, so this is the issue you see on iOS. Failed to load resource, um, this is now using capacitor, origin capacitor dash dash localhost is not allowed. So that's a little bit different origin uh, than the one we got on localhost. If we check out the same problem on Android, we will see that our origin now is once again HTTP localhost, so uh, again a bit different. Therefore, we can now go into the core server and instead of using um, from the process environment, although you could add it to the environment, uh, you can also just hard code it to allow your uh, local host where Ionic is usually running, capacitor local host and HTTP local host for Android. Hit save and then we are basically almost done. Now we just need a way to host this somewhere and I usually recommend to host it on Heroku. Um, you can create a free account, you can create a new application and once you're in your application you usually um, see commands to connect your repository to Heroku. Uh, in my case what I ran is Heroku git remote at uh, the name of your project. So that's really uh, what you see inside Heroku after you've created the project. Then you can commit your um, changes, which were just the change to the whitelist, and then you push the code to Heroku. That's everything you need to do. Uh, we don't want to save this and we don't really need this anymore. And once you've done this, you can go inside your application to settings and you should find your app uh, under domains. So we can now just copy this string and use it instead of the uh, default one that course everywhere gives us. And now we can run the application, we can load the data and the course uh, server needs to start because I used free uh, dinos on Heroku and we get the result. So now we've implemented our own server, really. We just cloned, we changed one line and uploaded it to Heroku and we made the API work. This is really just, it's just too easy and um, for testing that's definitely 100% fine. Now if you want a more robust uh, solution for this that also uh, works better in production because um, I don't know if I would use this solution in production, uh, you get the delay from making a call to Heroku um, we can use something else. So the second solution to fix your Ionic course issues is to use the Capacitor native HTTP client. Uh, if you're still on Cordova, um, you can actually also use a Cordova plugin. There's also a native HTTP plugin. But since I always recommend Capacitor, you can now use this one. So the first step is to call npm install capacitor community HTTP uh, plugin. I already did this and run the capacitor sync. Afterwards, you need to uh, register the plugin for Android. Uh, in fact, if you check out this video and capacitor three is already, I think this step should happen automatically. If you're still uh, on capacitor two, you need to find your main activity inside Android app source main and import the uh, plugin and add it within the init block. So perhaps you will already find it in there. Congratulations, in that case, you're on capacitor three. Now, uh, we need to change our logic inside the homepage um, a bit. Uh, first of all, we can import the plugin. Um, so that's the standard import capacitor plugin and then import the plugins object so we can destructure it. Um, maybe this might also change with capacitor 3, so not 100% sure about that, but we will see. Now, uh, let's create a new function that we call get request. Um, actually, the only problem right now is that, first of all, uh, in the web implementation, the capacitor plugin won't add any uh, benefit because we will still see the course issue, um, so we can also just uh, rely on the standard HTTP client um, and perform the same request, perhaps uh, use our course on the web and for the native version we can then uh, use the capacitor implementation. Therefore I added a check, so if is platform from Ionic Angular, um, if we're, uh, maybe we just use capacitor, I think we can use capacitor 
capacitor as well. So if the platform is capacitor, we're going to use the new approach with the plugin. In the other case, uh, we will use this call just once again. So we're going to return uh, the standard call, including the proxy. That makes sure our HTTP call works on the web fine for testing, for localhost, for whatever. But if we are on uh, capacitor, we can now uh, extract the HTTP plugin from, uh, no, not from, from the plugins object. It looks like this. Um, it's recommended by capacitor to defer this uh, destructuring to basically directly before you call a um, HTTP plugin. I don't know if there are any issues if you put this uh, right at the top of your class. So I just followed the advice. And then the problem is that we can now return HTTP dot uh, request. So there are a few other functions uh, on the native HTTP plugin. Um, but this request actually returns a promise and this get request returns an observable. I really love when we uh, need to work with promises and observables. Well, the easiest solution for that problem is to simply use from <coughs> uh, which can be imported from uh, uh, from RxJS. Uh, I already know that we also need a little map block, so we can also import that from RxJS operators. Now, back to the implementation at the bottom here. So we're going to construct the HTTP request using the capacitor plugin. Uh, we're going to supply, not that one, we're going to supply the uh, method. So we're just making a get request and we should perhaps pass in a URL. There are also more uh, options that you can pass. So uh, URL method params, data headers, and a bit more information. Then in our case, we really just need the URL and the method. Uh, I, I don't feel great about the brackets. It doesn't look right to me yet. But anyway, um, the problem here is, um, so we fixed the first problem that this returns a promise by adding from. So this is now an observable, but the data we get back at this point isn't uh, like the data we get here because it's wrapped inside a data property. And therefore we can just add a new map. Uh, let's call this result and we map the result to data. And then uh, the result from our observable call will be, can I not format this in any better way? No. Uh, the result in that case will be mapped to the right value. Now, instead of making the standard HTTP call, we just call our own get request and pass in the URL. Uh, in fact, the URL is this, and then we could also uh, change this. So we pass in the whole URL here, and we're gonna use the URL here, and we dynamically append it using the string lateral in here. Oops, that wasn't the right one. We want that one. Come on, <laughs> now we got it. Uh, so now the implementation looks right. You could also uh, create that function now for the post request, uh, patch, update, put, delete, whatever you want. And let's give it a try. Uh, actually, we should see basically the same result on the web because uh, we're just falling back to the web implementation, uh, which uses our course proxy. We can check this out by going to the network tab and we see that we make call to the API uh, course proxy. Now let's also check it out on a device. All right, so here's the application on my device. Let's quickly hit load facts. And we see there's actually a bit going on inside the application, but we don't see any JavaScript call in the background uh, right now within the network tab. So it's not a JavaScript HTTP call anymore. It's now a native HTTP call. And from the results, we also see that we get back the list of results. So the same applies to Android. On Android, you will see the same behavior because it's now using this block with the native capacitor plugin, uh, which maps the HTTP call to the uh, underlying native functionality and therefore uh, doesn't encounter the problem of course. So we've covered both cases. Uh, you can use the proxy, you can use the native uh, capacitor plugin. Rem a quick reminder, capacitor plugin is not gonna fix your issue on the browser. So in that case, we still need a way to other, uh, handle this differently. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed this quick win on solving course issues for your Ionic application. Remember, two options. First one, use a proxy, might be a bit slow. Second option, use the Capacitor native plugin. Won't work if you deploy your site as a, just a website, but great, uh, works great for a mobile application. If you get any other questions about this, of course, feel free to leave them below. And of course, uh, the best solution for this would be actually to just solve the course issues on the server side. This is really just a solution if you uh, can't talk to the team who created the API or you're using a public API that's not implemented course. So really, it's only for that. Again, check out the Ionic Academy, uh, give a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I will catch you next time. So happy coding, Simon.